This is the lightest mountain bike fork that Fox has ever produced. It's the 32 step cast and it is all new for 2025. Not only that, but Fox is updating its entire fork lineup for this year with three brand new dampers. There's the Grip X2, the Grip X and the Grip SL. As part of the official launch, we traveled out to Scotts Valley in California to meet the engineering team behind the 2025 Fox lineup. They took us through the development of the new dampers and we got to see the torture that new forks and shocks have to go through in the in-house test lab. We also got to pick the brains of people like Jordi Cortez who helped us set up the new suspension before riding the brilliant trails in the Santa Cruz region. In this video, we'll be taking you through the details of the 2025 Fox lineup, followed by our first impressions of riding the new suspension both in California and back home. Last year saw Fox update its rear suspension, but for 2025, it's all about the new forks. Now, upon first glance, things don't look all that different, and indeed, most of the forks carry over the existing chassis and Evo air spring from the previous year. The fork bushings are new, however, with Fox moving away from the split design of old in favor of a solid bushing that's claimed to significantly reduce friction. Where things get particularly exciting is with the arrival of three new dampers. That's the Grip X2, Grip X, and Grip SL. Now, while each of these dampers features a unique design that's intended for a specific style of riding, unifying them all together is the common grip architecture with a coil-backed IFP. This incorporates a self-healing function that helps to purge excess oil that's entered the IFP back into the main reservoir. Fox has also gone to some lengths to pressure balance the new dampers, and this offers several performance benefits which we'll discuss in more detail shortly. First up is the Grip X2 damper, which replaces the old Grip 2 design. This is the most gravity-focused option in the Fox lineup, and as such, you'll find it in longer travel forks like the 36, the 38, and the 40. While it does maintain the four-way adjustability of its predecessor, everything else is new. For a start, Fox has increased the overall size and volume of the Grip X2 damper. The base valve diameter grows from 20 to 24 millimeters, which helps to create a lower pressure environment for the damping fluid. This also helps with balancing pressures across the main piston. The goal is to reduce hysteresis and improve the fork's sensitivity during rapid changes of direction between compression and rebound. Furthermore, the bigger base valve makes room for a larger shim stack with 23 individual shims compared to just in the old Grip 2 damper. According to Fox, the bigger valve stack offers a broader and more usable compression tuning range via the high and low speed adjusters. And since the pressure balance damper is more sensitive, it's claimed that you can run more damping to increase support and ride height without adding significant harshness. Next in the range is the Grip X damper, and this is the all mountain all rounder that's designed to match up with the Float and Float X shocks. And as such, you'll find it in mid travel forks, including the 34, the 36, and the 38. The Grip X does feature similar architecture to the Grip X2, including that larger 24mm base valve. It's also pressure balanced to improve sensitivity and reduce the chance of cavitation. Fox has stripped things back a bit, however, with the lower portion of the damper being significantly smaller. It also features three-way adjustability, simplified with a single rebound dial. Up top, you still get independently adjustable low and high speed compression damping, but the high speed dial takes a slightly different approach with the last few clicks in its range adding a firm climbing mode. This isn't designed to be a full lockout, but by closing off the low speed compression circuit, it provides a firm pedaling platform, which is something that the old Grip 2 damper didn't have. Fox has incorporated a small lever into the dial, helping you to quickly visually identify where you are within the range, and that makes it a useful feature for trail riders and enduro racers heading up a long climb. With its slimmer construction, Fox claims the Grip X damper is 120 grams lighter than the Grip X2 and 100 grams lighter than the old Grip 2 damper. Finally, there's the Grip SL, which is the lightest option in the range. It's designed for XC riding and racing, so you'll find it in short travel forks this year, including the 32 taper cast, the 32 step cast, and the 34 step cast. As the long-awaited replacement for the outgoing Fit 4 damper, the Grip SL features an entirely new design with a coil-backed IFP. While it looks chunkier, it's claimed to be 60 grams lighter than the Fit 4 damper, leading to a significant weight reduction for Fox's high-end XC forks. You'll still find a three-position compression adjuster which provides open, medium, and firm modes. The lever offers a much lighter feel with less resistance when changing modes, and it's offered in
in both crown mounted and remote activated options. Rebound adjustment is performed by a single red dial on most forks, with the one exception being the new 32 step cast. In the name of weight savings, Fox has removed the dial entirely in favour of a long 2.5mm hex key. Now on the topic of the 32 step cast, this fork is entirely new from the inside out for 2025. Designed for XC racing, this is a super light fork that's optimised around 100mm of travel. It maintains the 32mm stanchion diameter of the old 32 step cast, but that's about where the similarities end. For a start, it features that brand new Grip SL damper. Fox has also shaved weight with a new steerer, crown and the Cobalt SL through axle. The most obvious difference though is the distinctive reverse arch lowers. Made possible by Manitou's expired patent, this design was first adopted by Fox for the 32 taper cast gravel fork. Here it takes on a far more prominent aesthetic with an organic looking structure that was developed developed with the help of generative design. You'll also spot new oil channels down the back of the legs. These help to distribute lubrication fluid up to the wiper seals, foam rings and bushings. Now with its new chassis, Fox claims the 32 step cast is 40% stiffer than the old fork while also being 100 grams lighter. That is a significant improvement and we wouldn't be surprised if Fox is working behind the scenes on implementing this reverse arch design into longer travel applications. Speaking of weight, Fox claims the new 32 step cast tips the scales at just 12 1285 grams. Our test fork here is a touch heavier with a cut steerer tube that comes in at 1308 grams. That's still very light but I've mostly been impressed with just how plush and active this fork is out on the trail. The Grip SL damper offers amazing sensitivity and the lever itself has a much lighter action compared to the old Fit4 damper. Now if you're keen to know more about the new 32 step cast, I've put a link to the full review in the video description down below. As for the bigger forks, well Mick has 130mm travel Fox 34 Grip X fitted to his Santa Cruz Tallboy and I've got 160mm travel Fox 36 Grip X fitted to my pivot switchblade. Now if you follow Flow mountain bike, you'll know that we've had a ton of experience with the previous versions of these two forks. In fact, just a few months ago, we pitched the 34 against the Pike and the 36 against the Lyric in a series of head to head reviews, which you can read over at flowmountainbike.com. Comparing the new Grip X to the old Grip 2, there are several benefits worth mentioning. For a start, the new forks are lighter. This new 36 Grip X fork weighs just 1980 grams compared to 2107 grams for the old 36 Grip. Too. Secondly, the addition of a firm platform via the high speed compression dial is an excellent feature. We've gotten used to most high end trail forks not having a lockout these days, but that doesn't mean we miss it. With the Grip X damper, you're now able to engage a firm pedaling platform by rotating that dial all the way around to its stop. While not a full lockout, the fork does sit higher in its travel and is more resistant to pedal bob, and that makes it a useful feature for smooth fire road climbs and commuting to and from the trailhead. Thirdly, we like that the single rebound dial helps to simplify setup and tuning. Following the chart on the back of the fork lowers, Fox provides a recommended air pressure and rebound setting based on your riding weight. That puts you in a really good starting position and from there it's mostly about fine tuning the compression dials to your preference. Combined with a float or a float X shock out back, it's easy to get a good setup without a whole lot of knob twiddling required. Out on the trail, we've been mighty impressed with just how plush and active both of these forks are. The overall feel isn't drastically different, which you'd expect given the chassis and the air spring are unchanged. They've got that familiar hypersensitivity that we loved about the old Grip 2 damper, while being lighter and simpler and having that nifty firm mode for the climbs. We've also found it's possible to run more high speed compression damping to add support and lift the fork's ride height without sacrificing traction and overall bump absorption. Now we've got a lot more testing ahead and we'll also be receiving two new Grip X2 dampers, which Mick will be retrofitting into his 36 and 38 to see if it's worth the upgrade. I'll be getting my hands on the new 34 step cast, and based on my experience of riding the 32 step cast, I'm very eager to see how its bigger brother performs. There's also more new Fox and Race Face components launching over the next few weeks, so keep your eyes peeled to flowmountainbike.com for a slew of upcoming reviews and head to head tests. If you've got any questions for us in the meantime, make sure you drop those into the comments below and we'll do our best to answer them for you. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time. Tooroo!